Hey guys, this is Rakesh here and I'm from ITVersity, a free open online university for students and for professionals. Guys, we are working on a playlist uh, for Hadoop certification CCA 175. My um, uh, partner has already done a lot in the same, whereas he has um, um, added many videos on, on the same and he has given so much uh, regarding the same. Uh, like. Um, he had demonstrated how to get scoop done. He had demonstrated how to get hive done and he has done on PySpark also. Guys, I'm little good in Scala. So I'll be doing the Scala part of it. So for Scala, we already have a code ready with us. What I will do is I'll simply perform certain tasks and we'll get you uh, done with the same. I will get you know what are the key things which you need to uh, which you, which you need to know while performing certification and while doing certifications uh, problems or issues. So what I'll do is I'll just type Cloudera CCA So guys, uh, in in the first, um, uh, so they have divided us. We all know that they have divided certification into three parts. One was Scoop, another was one Spark, and the third one is on Data Analytics part, which is on Hive. So I'll be covering that uh, Scala uh, uh, Spark. So guys, in the first part, um, what we need to do is we need to load data from HDFS and store the back, store it back into HDFS using Spark. So as I'll be doing the Scala part, I hope you had followed the previous videos in which uh, my uh, my colleague has uh, my partner has uh, explained how to get scala or spark 1.2.1 into your system so what i'll do is uh, i'll simply go uh, d s minus l sorry l s minus l so we have spark uh, with me so spark bin i'll say spark shell what it will do is it will launch a spark shell and guys i have forgot to give uh, master as local uh, but if uh, default it will pick it as local only so if you can give spark shell minus minus local here it default will be local only so uh, it will be good to uh, have that view in your mind so it will take a minute to launch okay So now you can see that uh, my Spark context is ready, is available with me, right? And in the logs, you can see that it has picked version 1.2.1. And in the job history, if you go there and you'll find it that something is running in the background, which is nothing but, uh, which is nothing but a Spark a job which is running. So as of now, we haven't done anything. So what I'll do is I'll go back here and we'll perform certain tasks. Uh, it's very easy to do the task. What I need to do is I just need to copy paste it from the uh, my uh, yeah from here. So to load a task, what I'll do is I'll have to create a data RDD in Spark. So I hope you know that what RDD is. RDD is nothing but a resilient distributed data set, which has few properties like it is partitionable it is cacheable uh, it is lazily evaluated it is type inference which is not a property of spark but of scala so just copy this and see what will happen okay so you can see that it has mapped rdd1 add text file so it has picked the text file and this is nothing but a simple scala a simple rdd which has which it has got so if i have to perform some task on it what i can do is i can say data rdd dot count
let me see what it will show me ideally it should show the number of uh, records in it, this case it has shown me six okay and let me go and check what are the number of records i have so to go here what i'll need to do is i'll go to you and then particularly in my file browser and where is it it's in scope import and there should be six records yes there are six records so this is what rdd is so i have what i have done is i have just imported the data from hdfs but guys this is not the end of the story suppose if you have to uh, upload data from hdfs and you're not on uh, on the same machine so what you need what what can you do here like what i have done is you can see that um, i've given uh, val data rdd and i just given this uh, path which it automatically picked hdfs but suppose you're not on this machine what will you do for that guys you need not to do anything but you need to type hdfs colon right will that help i guess yes but uh there's another thing you can do as well so for that what you can do is you need to give the whole path of your machine which is like hdfs uh, quick start and the port number and then the whole path from user cloud era scoop import which i think i had given it here itself like here so i need to copy this part till here copy it paste it so guys what do you expect uh, will it uh, pick the data from that uh, department's department's uh, text file yeah it had right so if i'll say and if i'll say it should give me six all right so this is it how this is how you can pick the data from hdfs and you can store it back to the hdfs which is very simple so we know how to pick the data from hdfs now it's a turn to store it back to hdfs so guys what i can do is i can perform some action on the scene right what i can do is i mm, instead of performing some action into it what i can simply do it uh, there's a way how to print uh, each record through it so for that you need to not need to do nothing but what you can do is go here and type data rdd dot collect what it will do is it will collect for each is nothing but a special type of um what is it a special type of loop like for each is loop which will uh, go through each and every line and will perform a print action on that same right <clears throat> it's very simple right now what we can do is we can store the data back to the hdfs and to store the data back to the hdfs in text format right so what i'll do is i'll simply say what i'll do is i'll store the data in text format as well as in object file as well. i haven't done in object file earlier so <laughs> it will be new for me as well so here mm, i delete should okay something has happened i'll go back to this job browser what it is in me i need to see mm -hmm. oh my god something has happened it has collected it has counted and it has saved it in the file as well the description is also given oh my god isn't it interesting guys you can see what stages it had formed so everything is in detail here you can see that um the task which has it has involved the executor is nothing but the same quick start i hope you know about what executor and what uh, driver is so that is it and uh, i can go back i can go back i can go back yeah everything is working fine and then what i can do is um, i hope everything is good and let me let me look into where the file has been stored go to who go to file browser and then where i had stored 
the apps path and the departments and there are two files guys do you know why there are two files because i had given two uh default my i have two output um, executors or what i can say that partial partition did because there are two core processor which i had given to my uh what is it um my vm show you Mm -hmm. Processors. So there are two processors running on two cores. That is why. And let me store it in a object file as well. Mm -hmm. Now it should store it in an object file. Go back. And see okay there are the department objects and it should be an object form which is nothing but this so in which apache null writable which is a key in the writable and these are the writables like java lang string right by writable so it has stored it into an object format i can again pick that up and can perform some action the same so guys, this is it about how to store and how to retrieve files from HDFS. I hope this was a very simple activity. Guys, thank you very much for watching our videos and I'll, in the next video, I'll show you how to store and how to save it in sequence file. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.